welcome everyone to another exciting in event podcast oh, yes. in event talks so today we are here with this bold personality in our industry and the picture to read is mini bio because not mini but it's important to say and i'm, I'm your host today Vinny. Uh, so julius is the season event professional behind the event manager blog right the, the, the creator of oh. the event manager blog and after growing the publication significantly, he made the move, the bold move to sell to the industry leaders gift. We're gonna talk about this. Oh wow. More recently, Julius also launched Bold Push, a full service firm helping event and tech companies accelerate growth. It's been incredible to witness what he has already accomplished. Uh, I always follow his newsletter, his posts on LinkedIn. If you don't, you should start to do it now. And Alongside with his professional success, Julius also became an American citizen. Yeah. A soccer fan at a heart, Julius has a sharp life and event industry future. His journey is a mix of passion and vision. And today we're going to support all this fine story behind all the this 10, 20, many years in the industry. Thank you, Julius, for being Thank here. Thank you, Vinny. Thank you, Evan. So much. And this is like one of the best intros ever. Finally, like somebody's not just reading whatever I give them or like you know bias from everywhere, but like you know, they spend the time to to create it and it shows. I appreciate that. It's You're welcome. Start. You're welcome. So uh, I would love to talk about Julius before you started uh, event manager blog. Did you dream about everything that you accomplished? Because some people say like you must visualize, right? Visualization of what you want to accomplish is so important. How did you visualize that? A great question. Um, I mean, I always tell this to when I used to do this keynote oh, back in the days, um, and I was a little bit more motivational. Um, I was 17 years old. Um, I was in, um, summer study, English study. I was born Italian, so I was born and raised in Italy. And so I came over to LA. I was very lucky to get three weeks of English school. And I remember, you know, picking up, you know, public phone at the time. I'm old. This story is like, oh my God, I'm getting very, very old. And so public phone, I call Italy, I was like literally almost crying over the phone. And my mom was like, you know, what is what is happening? Are you homesick? I was like, no, I don't want to come back. I want to stay here forever. That's that, that was my plan. And so I was obsessed with the idea of moving to the United States and, and kind of live here. Um, and so you were seventeen that time. You no, know, it took me twenty years. No, but yeah, eventually I got there. You know, I got there in London, Australia, I spent time everywhere. But yeah, I find I think I really wanted, and actually in 2013, I was back in Los Angeles. And that's when I actually thought, I, I really want to move here again. And so I went to speak to a migration lawyer and sort of understand my case and, and then, yeah, the rest is history. Yeah, I relate a lot with that. Like the first time I came to the country, I think it was, I don't know, 13, around 13 as well. Yeah. And I just fell in love, like yeah. oh, this is the place I want to live. And, uh, but at the same time, we see so much hate, still hate, right? Still racism against uh, international people, against yeah. foreign people. Yeah. Uh, do you see that still in the event industry? Because the event industry is made by a lot of international people, right? I've, I've never experienced, like, you know, I've been an immigrant all of my adult life. I was born in Southern Italy, and I went to study in Northern Italy, and Northern Italy picks in Southern Italy. You know, with, I wouldn't call it racism, but like it's not, you know, South is poor. So, you know, you go off to find work. You're not always welcome there. And then I moved to Australia as a student and, and, and so as an immigrant. There, while there were some of the riots, I don't know if you remember, we were talking 2004, so people were bashing, you know, uh, whoever didn't look uh, standards in the streets. So it was like very, very, agitated time, spent my time in London for many, many years. So I've been an immigrant most of my life, kind of used to deal, uh, and also to kind of respect also the local sort of uh, people and their, their thoughts and what they think. So I've never been that exposed, I would say, in luckier. Um, maybe Italians and Italians are kind of 
perceived in a nice, uh, welcoming way, but I've seen it all around. And you're always a guest, you're always, even if you're a citizen now, you feel like a guest. Um, you know, it's never your own place. And even when you go back to Italy, you're a guest as well there as well, because you're not truly, I haven't spent probably um, some time in, in the past 20 years in, in Italy for a long time. So it's an interesting, you know, um, I guess, place. The events industry per se, I feel like in the events industry. Everybody's very welcome in the events industry. They understand that you know, problems like racism cannot coexist with events where you've got to be inclusive, you've got to have more as many people as possible, you got to get them together, you don't want any trouble. So I think the industry is very clear um, that they cannot afford any kind of behavior like that. And so, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I guess I'm lucky to be in the events industry. Yeah, I feel maybe it's not the event industry, it's the people itself. And this is part of human being, right? Like uh, you have your community, we grow as a community. And if you see someone that doesn't look like you, doesn't have the same accent, maybe it's weird. Uh, someone told me, I was like, oh, I'm looking maybe to move to DC. And the person told me, I don't know if we're going to afford to live in DC. Oh, wow. <laughs> but I think it's just like uh, spontaneously because she mentioned I was this person that she said that for person live in the middle of the country and the cost of going to see of yeah. course is way more than yeah. anywhere in the country probably should I think be. you need to have thick skin you know, being an immigrant everywhere. Uh, you gotta you gotta be able to shrug off a lot. Um, and um, yeah I feel like you know we'll all be exposed to it. You move on and um, play the system. And you know as a speaker as well, I've been a speaker since two thousand and nine and English is not my uh, you know, mother tongue. I, I write in English as well. And English is not my mother tongue. So you can only imagine, like people coming after my talk and say, "Oh, you said that. You should have said it that way." Or like, you know, whenever you publish something, you have grammar. You call them grammar Nazis. That you know, do not care about anything you wrote. Like, it's, I think you're mistaken. This. And this is the way. CEOs of companies. Like, like, why don't you go back to work? Why are you spending your time on LinkedIn correcting my grammar? Like, so, yeah, it's, yeah, <laughs> the time you laugh about it. Yeah, uh, and that, that motivates us, right, to keep pushing, to keep, like, a, even uh, making our own odds more successful. So, and this is part of being an entrepreneur, being part of the event industry, also events. You must have this entrepreneurship, like, a skin, right? Because every event is a new project, a new challenge. You cannot just copy and paste what you have done before, right? Totally. I mean, I was, um, since we both love soccer, um, I was listening to an interview with Ibrahimovic recently, and he said, you know, I love when I play at home with my friends, but I get excited when I'm, uh, you know, away, and I got everybody shouting at me, that fires me up. So I love that type of attitude. I, I can see I have that. I would love to have more of that. Um, because like, especially when you're getting old and you've been doing this for like almost 20 years now, you still get the same comments again and again. And again and comments. I recently published like, you know, an event tech map and like there's like three CEOs. I'm like, you know, in the comments say, you know, how much money did you get to put this map together? I'm like, what? how? Like, how is that even possible? How would you think? First off, it's a felony to get money for tech and do not disclose it to everybody or like any type of like, so I've been doing this for like 20 years. Like, you think like I would do something so stupid? Um, so yeah, I mean, that type of behavior, after a while, really, you're like tired of it. So sometimes, you know, <laughs> uh, sometimes I feel like, oh, my God. it's part of the game. So do you believe uh, we needed to be more kind? Not only the event industry, right? I think we need to be more kind in life in general, right? I think so, I think so. But also I think it's my karma as well. Because sometimes I'm very, you know, I pick on a lot of stuff and, you know, I like to be direct and transparent. So people do the same with me. So I shouldn't complain. And so, that's that was the way you got into the off voice in LinkedIn, right? Oh, yeah. Recently. Oh, my God. But that okay. should have been way, way back before. Like, oh, no, you no. are definitely one of the big influencers on LinkedIn, especially in our industry. There is no one even close to you, I believe. I appreciate that. Um, you know, there's people on LinkedIn that I follow that have hundreds of thousands of followers that are not top voices. So that's, when I saw that, I was like, wow. I was, you know, literally LinkedIn changed my life. Like, 
you know, I'm very um, grateful to social now. Since I started my blog, you know, I run a group. With, you know, now it's like, I think it's 500,000 men planners or something like that. So that's been instrumental for my growth. LinkedIn has always been instrumental to the growth of my platform. Um, and so, yeah, I'm extremely thankful for, for the company, for the people uh, there, for that type of recognition that you don't get that easy. So it's, it's a big deal. And I feel the responsibility of it as well. So, which is, you know, how you show up and like the type that you do that changes the narrative not that you cannot still see what you think but you know mm-hmm. act in a more gra- gracious way i have to hold myself in a comment a bit more and um we we have seen a lot of posts about imac right coming from imac and they they're probably using social media very well but what are the advices you give for event planners using social media how they can leverage this such a powerful tool mm-hmm. uh we thought like a Oh, Facebook is going to change the world. Facebook is going to change the world, and definitely they, they have changed, right? So, what events can do to embrace this more and more? Make this a tool for content for networking. First off, I, I love what you guys do. Social media, I think, is super fresh. It's like it's a different approach, like the brand that you have. Even if you don't like care a lot, like you bring up your phone, take you know images and videos. I love that that natural part of it like it's like there's always like this this idea in the events industry that you have to show up like five video crews to do this amazing advertisement type of videos that are kind of like you know uh you know, sales pitch on steroids of some sort you know even like you show up with amazing view all nobody cares like people want to hear like you know what's true and and that i feel connecting on a personal level makes a difference said that i was literally um recently at an event in Milan, in Italy, MPI, and someone from the audience asked me, like, what is the number one thing we should do to not find more work? And I'm like, you know, if you don't show up on social networks multiple times a day, that's, that's it. You don't, you don't exist, essentially. Like, you know, the mark, that's the marketing, especially if you're small, that is the marketing today. And it's free. Like, it's free. You don't have to pay for it. And like, I don't understand where people have to pay for Google ads and, you know, you know ads everywhere else and rent that time. Like, everything runs. Yeah, the algorithm comes and goes, but it's still free. So it's a big, massive, organic opportunity that you have for your brand, for yourself. Um, then, you know, um, I feel you have to show up with, with value. That's the problem. That's the second problem I see a lot of times, you know. A lot of planners show up and they think it's like their diary to share their life and whatever. And it's fine to do it from time to time to time. But like, you all talk about yourself all the time. Nobody cares about yourself. Like, you did to provide something valuable. Nobody cares about Julius. You know, like, I never shared anything personal. You'll never find, you know, family picture, or whatever. My wife was on the show for it. Nobody knew that. She was like doing an activation. I didn't take pictures and say, oh, this is a proud, fun family moment. Who cares about that? Even like when I take personal pictures, there's never something about me. There's always something about something that I'm experiencing, something of value to others. Like I told my story about IMAX and their pictures with Karina. I was like, that's more about the team at all. It's not about me. So shifting that perspective to self-wonders and providing value whenever you turn up on social media, it's so far, but like nobody gets this. Like everybody starts like talking about themselves and they're getting them and their struggles and even like even the mental health struggle, which we respect. It's fine to go out with it and let people know to show others that it's fine to do that. But like a constant, you know, updates on on your mental health status, unless you do work with that and you have an initiative on mental health, but that's your job. You know, what is the message there? People get confused. And then I feel like we have to be more, more focused on the audience. I'm always being focused on the audience, not myself. No, yeah, definitely. Uh, that changed the perspective, right? That changed the way you, people will understand your content. And that's what we need to do when we uh, promote our events, right? We talk about the story of our events, our community. And that's, I believe, also why people love to share about IMAX on social media and they have leveraged the game so much. 
for people that didn't come, they feel so like uh, missing this outbreak. The phone has been incredible. I, had to, I read some comments from people saying I literally had to close LinkedIn. It was too much to deal with. Especially when you see like, you know, 90% of your colleagues and friends and uh, people you work with are there and you're not. It's pretty tough. I guess it's like, it's also on, on a bent side. How do you include those people as well, right? How do you create an experience for them? And maybe it's not as similar, but like you still, you know, make feel part of the game, right? And I feel like in this swing back to in person, we're forgetting about all of those that cannot be there. And it's a ton of them. It's a ton of them. I saw uh, when I did my roundup on, on Wednesday of the show, the show was still going on and I created my roundup on day two and I put it out and there was a ton of comments of people saying, thank you so much for this. I feel like I'm part of it. Like, even if I'm not there, thank you for sharing. It was, that's valuable to people. They want to feel part of it. It's nothing. It's like whatever. It's 300 words that I put on LinkedIn. There's so much we can do and we have to remember, uh, you know, to be more open to these people. And um, I, I, felt, I felt like we tried it after the pandemic, like these studios or whatever, but like after that, everything was gone. And so, yeah, we need to go back to it. I feel the hybrid experience still has a place. So this new technology they developed. Um, so Lex Friedman had to go to Pittsburgh, I think it was, to do the scan of the space. And then so they put all those, that scan into a model that will recreate basically a computer version of Lex Friedman that will um, essentially be projected through, uh, I think it was Quest 3. And essentially the end result, which you can see on Spotify or YouTube, is Lex Friedman and Mark Zuckerberg remotely in the same room. And Lex Friedman was interviewed, you know, everybody, famous uh, and has seen it all. He spent probably 15 minutes saying, I can believe this. I can believe you're here next to me. I feel like you're here next to me. So that's a game changer for the industry. Obviously, um, it will take some time. I don't know how long it's gonna take, to be honest, but uh, not that long um, at this stage. So once we feel we're in the same room, like we're doing this, it was like just talking about podcasts. And like, I never do podcasts remotely because I won't have the feeling. And it was like, this has changed forever. Since I can do that, like I don't need you to be in the same room. And so the application of that, um, expand it to motion as well. And so you move into places you feel like you're moving together in a place. That's a, that's a game changer for the events industry because the limitation of virtual events, as we call them, about uh, digital events that we experienced during the pandemic, is a flat 2D experience. But they tried with the metaverse, but failed with avatars. Now that we have like these realistic the avatars that look like us and interact, and we have a feeling of presence. That's going to change everything. Because that's going to expand the spectrum of the types of events that we're going to be able to do. And it's going to completely stop up it so the opportunities to be created. So right now, we have to work with the sphere to be created, right? And only events can afford the sphere. But think about a virtual world with design event all around you. And all of a sudden, people can interact with it and do business do an exhibition, you don't need to travel to Vegas. That's, that's uh, I feel, the future um, of, of our industry, uh, creating those experiences. And in person, it's going to be always the most important. As much as they can work on presence, at the end of the day, we want to shake hands, we want to feel people, and that's going to be very important. But everything around in person, even now, you know, mid level events are being cut, smaller kind of sized events, people don't care about it anymore. They go to the big one or they go to the very small one, but everything in the middle is being cut out into Zoom. We can do Zoom or we can do virtual that we don't need to do to 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 travel to all that. And so that's gonna expand even more. And so very exciting times. Then there's the AI and the venues. AI definitely the biggest um, impact we've ever seen. Um, and that was the biggest uh, excitement, at least so far, that I've ever seen in the events industry, ever. More than apps, more than engagement, more than anything else. Um, so I'm excited about that. What is it going to be the impact? We don't know yet. It's to be seen. 
um, how it develops. But you know, there's a ton of processes that will be replaced by AI. And that's a good thing for events. Because, like we've always had problems, especially for in terms of scalability. So that's gonna change. And then finally venues. I think we will we will define venues in a before sphere and post sphere world where um, you know how you compete with something like this here, right? How do you compete when as a as a venue, even as a special venue, when literally your competitor is every day on social media. I was today, I opened up my feed and it was an Xbox logo. The sphere was an Xbox logo. And it was everybody was like sharing Yeah. So the impact of that is massive. Once you're in, the experience with it is incredible. So how do you go back to a hotel with those lights you can't even see? Like whatever, or like with those crappy looking screens. Like we already seen it. How like most user processes in tech, for example, they have these huge LEDs in the back um, to support the experience. So that's the evolution of it. You make experience that become part of the experience. Will we see it for business events? Then yes, we will. I think user conferences, at tech conferences, events like AWS or you know, all the Salesforce and the like. You're going to want to have to play with that um, sort of screens to create excitement about something that is extremely boring. Company updates, right? So, you know, think about it because I'm very excited about the future. And events are at the core, of, like, there's no risk if we do it, right? Perfect. No, I love it. Uh, and we, you mentioned exactly how we're going to cover this gap between like uh, people that travel to IMAX or any other event and people that decided to stay at home so they can really uh, sense the event uh, remotely, right? With those gears with Oculus or whatever is the, the one that are gonna take over the market. And yeah, that's really important to make sure because it's not everyone that's gonna travel. Uh, tra traveling, it's getting more expensive. We don't know if we might go back. Maybe not, maybe yes. And, and also the time that you spend outside of home is a lot, right? Yeah. I've, I've heard people saying like, oh, the travel company delayed my connection. So I lost my main uh, flight and then I stuck in the city for one more day. So a flight that it should take like a, maybe 12 hours now is taking two days oh, yeah. of my, my it's life. It's a problem. It's a problem. I mean, do more than that, I feel. Um, you know, if you're an introvert, right? if you're introverted, um, you've had your moment. Because, like, you know, events are like, you know, literally, it's a, it's an excruciating experience for introverts to be, uh, like, think of an event like that. It's 15,000 people, first time there, and you've never been there. Probably not someone, not really. I so much to take in, even if you've been there before. I've been there for 10 years. I still like, uh, you know, too much happening. I don't know where to go and what you ought to prioritize. And so introverts, they had the pandemic. A little sudden, they can be from home and they're experiencing all of these amazing events, right? They feel part of it because the chat, they feel more comfortable with it and, you know, that type of experience. And then it's gone. From one moment to another, and gone. Who cares about that anymore? And so these people are like, what about me? What about the people that are like with strong disabilities that uh, cannot be at events? Like, period. They cannot be there. I know people in events industry that have been at the forefront of it. They cannot travel. That's it. Especially after the pandemic. Like, people had, you know, a very bad evolution in their existing disabilities. And so, what do we do about that? There's second class attendees. That's what they are. But, you know, de facto, despite what we try to say and not say. Um, and so I feel there's a bigger piece of it's not only, not only the uh, business opportunity, which I believe 100%, we we're expanding, extending, whenever we create an hybrid experience, recording, you're, you're showing up with a more intentional. So A B, so you're recording better experience which you can sell or expose later, uh, and that's becoming powerful. I feel uh, post pandemic, but then you're including other people as well, and that's, that that makes a difference. If we're thinking about our industry in terms of connecting people. No, yeah, accessibility is something that I 
there is a long road in front of us to you know improve uh, either for in person either online or both hybrid events uh, we have developing tools for helping this on mutual language captions right so we're speaking here in english and the person decide whatever the language they want to hear or just read the captions this is going to be something important for in-person events right more and more and not just the language but any spot I didn't mention like that. Disability, how the person goes to those places that are so far from the airport or from their hotel. There are so many escalators and it's hard to get No, there. yeah, and like probably one of the best observations of the show um, was from a company that doesn't get a, a good rap in the industry because, you know, you're in an interesting position. It's Encore, right? Encore, uh, which is a humongous AV company for those that are on a different planet and they are aware of that. Um, like, you know, they have a strong monopoly on the position, many, many properties. And so they don't get it necessarily the rap. I feel, you know, the way they showed, um, they had a video basically that was the old activation. It was a video I'm thinking about attendees with hidden disabilities. And that's like a, a, a whole new uh, way of thinking. So people that may have, um, you know, um, they, they don't see colors right, and uh, people that are maybe injured, and uh, you know, for a specific moment. And so, not the usual disability uh, necessarily maybe included in the, the ADA type of uh, you know uh, approach, even though we're not necessarily even doing a great job with that. But like I could see also in the um, in the Google activation uh, how they talk about your Divergent and obviously Megan has been at the forefront of it with her personal story as well. So it's been, it's been, you know, I think we're moving towards that. Um, I, I love and totally embrace that. Um, and it's here's the message though, because like I feel a lot of people listening usually to this topic they disconnect. They think it's kind of like a softy way of looking at it. I think it's a business decision as well. And I feel I stimulate these people to also. Uh, highlight the business outcome. I think that, like we need to have that conversation. As well. It's just a matter of inclusion, yes. It's a business opportunity as well if you leverage it the right way. Because at the end of the day, unless you're a nonprofit, you do events for nonprofits. It's obviously it's inherent to your cause. You have know, businesses to run, and I feel like whenever you're inclusive, you're extending to more people. Uh, you know the reach of your event. Period. If so, it's like when you talk about sustainability. Sustainability is about saving money, I feel. So sometimes you get the attention by having this conversation because not everybody is super enlightened. Some, you were, we're talking about very margins shrinking because the costs are going up so much, and especially for the next year. And so this is a very tough environment. These conversations do not stick with the decision makers sometimes. So I think we need to bring it back to the business aspect. Yeah, uh, but on the other hand, like uh, if we look at things like Apple, right? They did their WWDC, like some events, they're doing fully re remote, yeah. only on YouTube. And they miss so much of like uh, being on a stage with like uh, thousands of people watching, right? Like uh, they're making. I'm laughing because, you know, for this very reason, I almost got fired in the past. Like, specifically, I was talking about the Apple event. And I'm like, whenever they do the Apple event, they call it an event. I didn't think it's an event. I mean, it's like it's a YouTube video. It's a video. It's a recorded video. Broadcasting, right? Like That's the maximum. Yeah, it's not even a broadcast of like a live event. Like you know, it's just recorded, and so most of it. And I'm like, how is that an Apple event? Right? If you go back and watch on YouTube the launch of the iPhone, you could hear in the audience all, 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 all those reactions. You can see jobs flipping from time. To that's part of the excitement of feeling human and like they're dehumanizing that experience that jobs actually made superhuman and like very, you know, direct and in touch and contact. So they're creating this ethereal. Um, if I would be, you know, hired by Apple tomorrow to do their events, I would tell them like, go immediately back, get team call on the stage, whatever, if things not working. Nobody cares. Like at the end of the day, in fact, people are. I know that I don't really expect anymore when you have an Apple event. I remember back in the days when Steve Jobs was there announcing, like, literally everything was stopped. If you were working in an office, I was in Apple at the time, 
was working in the office, I would remember everybody was connected to watch an online live. You know, there's millions of people connected to the launch of the product from the company. So what you're doing today, I appreciated the video that they did. I mean, that's nice. You can you can add that, like you know, it's just more producing stuff like that, but like the whole announcement has become a pain. Like I have to sit through a presentation. That's not an event as we define it. It's not a live experience that has been cool. It's a recorded shooting of a video. So yeah. There isn't the same tension right off the bat that craves on that as the audience. You also feel like a tension the same way, of course, not the same vibe of the person on stage, but you can feel like, uh, wow, well, any mistake will be a big yeah. mistake, but at the same time, you want to see that. You yeah. want to feel like uh, they can make mistakes. They are human as well. Totally. If it's pre recorded, like a uh, prevent of this importance. No, yeah. and then, like if you think about where we're heading, we're in becoming so standardized, so perfect. Like you go on chat GPT, I literally you know, write a white paper for me for the agent, you know, like use it in my marketing. Who are we gonna believe eventually? Like why are we gonna believe these people if they, these people do not show up and turn up? I always tell my clients, you know this, right? When you tell my clients, I'm like, you know, for for events like Timex, for example, I always tell them like you gotta be at Optics, period. Like, I don't care about what you do online, what you do. You know, like, you got to show up. People need to know you exist. You know, otherwise you don't, like, you're just this experiment. It doesn't work in the events industry. People want to see you in person, know who you are. I actually, before I attended my first event, I think I spent four years just doing online. I didn't know about the events industry. I was like, just talking about events from a completely different perspective. But, like, when I got to attend IMAX, I I started to understand the dynamics and the relationships of the people. Also, my readers were there. And like, you know, I needed to understand that better. And, and so are like a lot of companies' clients. Right? You need to connect with the clients. You cannot just send emails and expect you know, drive in the events industry. It clicks, yes. It clicks when you are in person. And especially on like B2B, whatever in the industry, it doesn't matter if it's events. If you are doing anything that is B2B, you are because by the end of the day, it's not B two B. It's B two B, right? So it's a person to a person. Yeah. And uh, you you go with those people that you trust, and trust will be more and more a currency that is so high important. Like, uh, you're not gonna go with another event or another technology, whatever it is, if you don't know more about like uh, how much I trust this, how much I trust my data, how much I trust my uh, my money, whatever my time to that. I've um, seen it again and again how some sales uh, professionals that work in the events industry, literally, like the, their clients, they're following them to whatever company they go. You know, they like literally do not care about the product um, to the level that I'm like, I just want to work with you. I just want to want you because I know I can phone call you up and like you know, fix this for me. This is way more important in the events industry. Than just you know, having like something that looks nice on people or like the whole SaaS model of like how it's implemented in the Silicon Valley. It doesn't apply to the events industry. I feel, you know, in the events industry is about showing up and that what it matters. And you know this because you do 24 seven support, you're so invested in this. And so, you know, that type of like, you know, sending an email for support, that cannot happen. So some companies do that. They're like, they send a link to the FAQ. Right. I went to the FAQ, FAQ. Like, I literally didn't speak for, to my children for a week because I'm on site. You want me to go and check your FAQs? Like, that's not going to happen, right? Yeah. Yeah. That can be brutal for both sides. For both sides. Right. It's not easy. And, uh, but even you mentioned like Silicon Valley and our investors, and we did a white combinator, they still say, being in person in Silicon Valley is the best place in the world to start your company. If you're starting a tech company, there's no other place. Even like with all the problems we're seeing right now, right, in California, in San Francisco, yeah. uh, why YC, why they say, if you have a chance, come, come to Silicon Valley, they'll go anywhere else, at least for three months, six months. This is what we did. And yeah, it makes total sense. Yeah, well, I think it is the case. I interviewed uh, Jeremiah Oyen. My, my series of events, um, and uh, 
is at the forefront of AI right now in Silicon Valley. And, you know, he runs an event that started with like 50 people in a bar. He's now getting like a thousand people that are requesting to attend events. This is like, I think he counted around probably 150 events a week happening in San Francisco about artificial intelligence. So especially when it's the beginning of something I remember seeing on social media. I was in London at the time, um, 2007, 2008. I remember it was like a social media driven event every single day, multiple events a day, where you could go and talk to people about what is what's going to happen. And you're trying to figure out something, especially. It's so important for the community to come together. Then you probably you part ways and come back together later on. But like the inception of every new um, new wave in technology is being characterized by twin events. Yeah. Period. And these people, the tech people, they're the most connected online. They know, like, it's not like they don't know how to connect online. Still, they want to go out at events. Yeah, one thing will feed another, and it's a very good cycle. Uh, it doesn't stop the, over there, you know, on that meeting, on that event, or it doesn't stop online. Everything yeah. is connected over and over. And uh, we just finished IMAX. We are heading out to Event Tech Live. I think also IBTN, right? Many events. Yeah. Uh, what are the events people in the industry they needed to attend? It's like, a, do you feel what are the three top or five top most attended events? And also outside the industry, like uh, you've been to Saster, yeah. right? Like uh, we have also um, South by Southwest. It's amazing. Can so, you recommend some events for? I'm a, I'm a tad critical to events, events industry. I'm not the best one. I mean, kudos to Adam. I think he, he's been like you know the forefront on technology and how difficult it is to pull together you know, technology companies because like you know the total market is like very small anyway. So to pull shows so vertical and so niche, super difficult. And I know I was at the very first edition. I actually had conversations. Out and back in the days of London, so you should start an event about event technology. So, you know, I remember that, and uh, you know, I was the very first judge of the um, uh, event technology awards. So, uh, I remember when Slido won, it was like just two people right there, and we were like super excited, and, you know, and speaking. So it's been at the forefront of it, and I'm you know, extremely respectful of his efforts. So, you know, definitely support that because we need more of that. Then, you know, the rest of it, I'm like, version of IMAX in most cases. Um, or IMAX is that big that covers everything, right? Um, the problem that I have most of my career in writing content for events is from extremely demanding when it gets to content. So probably I'm not the best example. But, you know, I'm sure there's there's a lot of valuable content out there. To impress me when it gets to content is extremely difficult. And therefore I feel that all those events that market content then it's like you know a mix of like sponsor session from visit this visit that in terms of like destinations and uh, venues and whatever and then like the real good content is probably 10 5 percent of the actual show where it's like uh sponsors by sponsor after sponsor you know, like we have to sit into these painful sessions that you know doesn't cut it anymore and so i don't know i mean i i would literally have to I was at CMI, I enjoyed CMI, um, and PC Maker is very dedicated to that. Uh, I've had mixed experiences for the years when I attended PC um, as an attendee, as an exhibitor as well. So, I don't know, um, I feel like we need a better event for the event industry. I think we need an event that, you know, really puts the experience community and company together at a different level that it's not IMAX, or maybe IMAX can do it as part of the show. Um, but like we need a South by Southwest for events, right? Where we can have the creativity, the customization experience, um, you know, talk about business, talk about important topics for our industry. Um, so yeah, I think it's not there yet. Um, then outside of it, I obviously have a strong bias. I really love to attend tech events in general. Um, Saster was a great one. I was a South by Southwest. Um, I love that. Um, I attended some Web3 events last year, not anymore, I guess, um, just to learn more about you know, the events. We have that role 
and you don't know about something, you don't know about a topic, they're the best way to get sort of below that of what matters. So they have a fil they filter the noise, the noise of online. It's too much information, you don't know where to start. Events are great for that. And so I'll be at Money 2020 next week. She's going to be interested in, um, you know, Catherine Frankson. She's like, you know, royalty when it gets to event marketing. So very excited to see their approach, uh, what they're doing. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think I'm going to send more events outside of the events industry this year to get, you know, the inspiration flow and the sort of content our planners. Nice. Yeah. And we need to, we need to cater into this, share with us, talk about money and everything he has done. Of course. You already we, done it or you want to do it? We want, we want her here. Uh, she's awesome. Let's bring her. Um, probably to wrap up here was an amazing conversation. We didn't see the time going. I want to go back uh, to your personal background. I know you're a very private person, yeah. but uh, to be someone with so much success, and to have a time to like uh, see the insights, filter what it what it has to be available or not. Did you have someone like uh, to to give you this this opportunity, right? And probably your wife is the person that has supported you so much. It's uh, working so hard with you. Uh, what do we say to her? Uh, oh my God, <laughs> I wasn't ready for this. Yeah, no, it's, it's 50 50. It's only 50 50 to whatever I've achieved. I've achieved because of the work of my She's worked with me, you know, at Event and Me, uh, you know, for 10 years plus. And so, uh, and she keeps supporting me today. And so, it's, she's been instrumental to everything that I achieved. I'm, a, I'm a just a lot of talk and chit chat. She's been like actually building the business. Um, you know, and making it work. I don't think I'm like a, a good business person per se, of like in terms of operation and like running it. So, yeah, she's been instrumental. She knows that we share everything. We share all of our business. We share 50, 50, 50. This is not like just like someone in the back. This is like as important as invested as I am. Um, so yeah, no, I'm extremely grateful. We've been together for like. 23 years, so it's, you know, we shared a lot. It's been quite the journey, and we appreciate it a lot. I'm very grateful, you know, someone to keep up with me. I'm a, I'm a lot to take in, if you can imagine, right? So just seeing me on social media, I'm a, if you can you imagine, on a daily basis, like, yeah. So no, um, I'm thankful. No, yeah, I mentioned to someone this week that I like Julius online, but I definitely love the personal uh, relationship, like the, the, the real Julius, outside the social media. Uh, you are a real person. We had a situation. We were at the sphere and you left the sphere because of your family. Yeah. Uh, you put your family first. I think uh, this is the word we needed to build. Uh, we, we, we see all those uh, men on Forbes that, that they are like billionaire and you look to their personal life like it's miserable. Yeah. And uh, you are caring both. That's amazing. Yeah, so, the, the, the feeling is mutual. Really I want to say I don't want to sort of end up this with self-congratulation type of uh, it's like, you know, people always ask me, um, what do you think about the company? What do you think about those? What do you think about that? Whenever they ask me about an event, uh, I always say, like, these are great people to work with because I see you, I, so, I saw you, I observed a lot. I see you when you are going to show up at all the events, I attend events, you're always there. And then the two co-founders always turning out. I know how difficult it is turn up and like you have to give up a lot and so that level of passion that, that showing up showing up matters so much in this industry and so um on a human level we connect a lot with trade soccer stories and it's, it's just like already made like 70 percent of the relationship there but other than that i feel you know you're starting a family and that's why you're you're gonna you're gonna have e-commerce coming soon so i'm excited for that and uh you know, to share that, at the end of the day, you choose and pick the people you work with. Um, you know, I feel like we had the opportunity to work together on a number of projects, and I'm uh, I'm very lucky to have found people like your father and, uh, you know, Pedro and the rest of the team. It's, uh, it's an amazing game to be involved with, and uh, yeah, we, you get excited about the stuff we do. Nice, yeah. Uh, we And we as we was... Thank you. We, we still haven't found what we're looking for, right? There's a lot of things to find in this industry, a lot of friends to make, a lot of customers to support. And uh, yeah, that's going to be a long journey ahead. Any final thoughts you want to share with us? 
Oh, final thoughts. Uh, you know, we were at IMAX. I made this tweet. There, you know, I was there in the tech area. You guys were as well. And you know, uh, then I had a, a session that I had to do on the Inspiration Hub. And so it's interesting because, like, there was the tech area and the Inspiration Hub. You had to walk probably seven minutes from one end to the other end of the show floor. And my hope is that whatever is in the middle of IMAX goes to the sides and we can put the tech innovation and content at the, right, at the center of the events industry. So that's what matters the most. All the chit chat, all the free champagne, all of that, that's gone. That's part of the 80s and the 90s. We're done with that. Like we have people right now, we have young people that want to be involved and engaged in the content, technology, innovation, whatever it is, doesn't matter technology innovation has to be part of it. That's the new industry we want to see and it's right at the core of IMAX and you know so that the destination people can learn about it. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Julius, for all your answers, all your insights. Uh, we're gonna keep following you on LinkedIn, Twitter, your newsletter. More and more people will get involved and you have a lot of to share with us all your knowledge and you know there are so many things to learn with you. And yeah, it was a uh, very, very uh, pleased to be here with you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Bye. I'll see you in the next event call.